Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Enigmatica 2 Expert Mode Season 2. In the last episode we got our auto crafting set up which means that we can finally get all of this alloy processing up and running. The reason why I couldn't do this before is some of the recipes here require crafting recipes. For example, like this energetic blend has a glowstone and redstone combined recipe and I couldn't just export redstone and glowstone separately here and craft them. That would be way too much work. Uh, and we can just now auto craft this with our applied logistic system. I haven't set it up just yet. Uh, and I have set up quite a few of these items in here. So you can see we have all of the uh, ingots that we need and some more over here. And then we have also all of the blends and all of that good stuff. So one thing that we need to set up is the energetic blend and the dimensional blend. Those are the two that require a crafting recipe. Everything else is just a single item, except for the alloys, which are gonna be crafted here anyway. So if we go back to our base, um, actually before that, we're gonna grab some end stone uh, and we're gonna grab the dimensional blend that is in the system. And we're gonna say, provide endstone in this ME interface. And then we're gonna grab some conduits over here. And we're gonna bring these over like so, and then also bring some regular item conduits in like that. Uh, and we're gonna have this guy be the insert on red. And you are gonna be on extract to extract the endstone. And then we need just a filter, which is a simple basic item filter. We have the endstone in our inventory. And we can say end stone. We're gonna insert you on green and extract on red. And we can say always active here. So that should start going in here. Uh, all we need to do is add the power. And I don't know if I wanna just put a cell here and then bring the conduits over slightly like this maybe. I'll do it like this for now, just so I can walk past for the moment, but we can rearrange it in another way. So this should start making crushed end stone. And that should be going into the system. So crushed, crushed endstone is going in here. Uh, I am going to stop the machine for the moment. We're going to say redstone control active. Uh, yeah, redstone control. I think that turns off with redstone. So let's grab ourselves the crushed endstone because we want to put this into the drawers, I think. I mean, we don't probably need to keep more than a handful of these like a couple stacks of these. So what if we set this to, let's say 256, 256, 256, emit when levels are above or equal to limit. Yeah, there we go. That should just store in the system. That shouldn't be a problem. Anyway, okay. So now I need to set up a recipe for the energetic blend and the dimensional blend, which we can do uh, outside in our apply energistic system. So in our pattern terminal, we're gonna set up a recipe for the blend. Uh, we're gonna set up an energetic blend recipe and also a dimensional blend recipe. And currently we have a bunch of pulverized obsidian in here. We have 39,000, so we shouldn't run out anytime soon, but we are gonna set up uh, an automation with that because we have the basalt rods that we're getting that we're not probably gonna be using that much. So we can set up an automation to turn on and off the spawner that we have in the compact machine up up there somewhere. Actually, I think we have it right there. <laughs> so yeah, uh, so the patterns go into our interface and we can just put them right here. It really doesn't matter where we put them, okay? Uh, we then need to go back and set up a crafting card in the interface. So I think we can go back here. Uh, we have them right here. So we need a crafting card in here. So this can auto craft our energetic blend. So I have the filters for pretty much everything besides these top two rows. Let me fly, thank you. Uh, so besides these two top rows, because I don't have um, much of the stuff auto automated, so the ferroboron, I don't have the boron and the lithium and all of that good stuff. I don't have anything that of that automated. So we can just set an extract always active on all of these. Uh, except for this, yeah, this one as well, and this one, because all of you except you are empty, so you're gonna be insert on red, and we can do never active. So that should start extracting into all the things, I hope. Uh, I think I have inserts on everything, right? Uh, let's do round robin as well. 
just so it splits stuff around. And we might need some speed upgrades, but eventually I don't think we need to. Okay, why are you, we need redstone control on all of these, right? Yeah, yeah. So we have to check mark all of these because they're gonna start crafting. Uh, and I don't know if I have all of the alloys and such in the drawers. So we're gonna also go check on that in a moment, but let's just turn all of them to redstone control. Your redstone enabled high. Um, let's do redstone low and you need to be redstone controlled and all of those as well, but we don't have items for them anyway. All right, so I will grab uh, the alloys that we're getting in into here because I'm not extracting them out of the uh, out of the machines anyway. So I'm gonna go check on all of these if we have them in the drawers fully set up, uh, and if we don't, I'm gonna add them, uh, and then we should be good. Why are you not inserting steel from thermal foundation? You should be inserting the steel at some point. I don't know. Maybe it's still inserting, because it's not putting the steel here as well. Is there a different type of steel? You need to be putting nickel. You have nickel. You have an extract. You have nickel. I don't know. Maybe it's extracting some other stuff. But we'll see if all of them filter through, and we'll set them up in the drawers, and hopefully everything works. So another thing I noticed right off the bat is that redstone control is not gonna work this way. We're gonna need to do the conduit thing like we did with the phytogenic insulators because uh, this guy, for example, if I turn you off, uh, now this guy should be able to run if we do this. But if I if this guy turns on, this guy's not running because it's powered through quasi connectivity. So I have to remove all the smart cable and set up the conduits, move our interfaces into some sort of spot. We can probably stack them up here uh, in a line. I think that will work. Uh, and that I think should be good then. So conduits, moving all the smart cable, so lots more work. I managed to get all of them up and running. And here is what I did with the cabling. I just ran a full line down here on the side. So we have everything connected to all of the cabling and I move the interfaces over here to the side. So we have this top one that is going to be the insert and it's also going to have some extracts once we get all of the alloys for all of those automated because those are going to need a few different things as well. Uh, and we don't have enough space in this guy to do everything else that we need to do. Uh, and we also have another extra three channels total because we don't really need the wireless access point here at all times and we can move it to those channels if we need to. Uh, but we have an extra two to three channels uh, so we can add two more interfaces if we needed to uh, for uh, all of the stuff here. And I decided to do that because uh, otherwise the two interfaces would just not be enough if we had another layer of alloy furnaces uh, up top here. Plus, I don't think we really need anything more than these, what it would be, 10, 20, 25 total. Uh, and what I want to do in this room around here uh, is I want to set up the pulverizing of some resources uh, because we're going to need some of the dusts for our mechanism upgrades and all of that good stuff. And some of the stuff we're going to need to be fully smelted. So we're going to automate some redstone furnaces. We could even do mechanism smelting factories, but I think the furnaces are just uh, just okay in this sense. Uh, and they're easierly uh, redstone controlled uh, than the other ones are. I mean, it really is the same, but you know, uh, I'll, I'll do those. I did uh, the smelting factories last time, so we'll do furnaces this time. Uh, and yeah, uh, we still need to automate these four alloys, uh, which is going to be either an alloy smelter once we get there. Uh, but I think we will just do the whole, uh, I think it's the, not, not the melter. Did I look up uses for this? I looked up uses. I want the recipe for this. So we can do the fluid infuser, which is what I kind of want to do. So we need to melt redstone and do the Shibuichi alloy. Uh, and actually, once we get to um, to the point where we can automate it with an alloy smelter, we can just remove that setup uh, and we can just put it over here because the tin silver alloy can then be directly automated into the Lumium, I believe, and the Shibuchi, Shibuichi alloy can be automated into Signalum and I think I have lead platinum somewhere right over here. That can be in Derium at some point as well.
so I think that will be really cool. Uh, yeah, we can actually move the LED Platinum over here and put the manual in somewhere up here. So it'll be uh, nice and neat and together. That could be a thing. Okay, so uh, those we will automate once we actually get uh, Platinum because that is gonna require Platinum Seeds. Uh, which is a tier 5 uh, iridescent altar. So I think right now we're gonna go work on a little bit of magic. I'm gonna take a bit of a break from this and we can work on all of these setups on livestream today. Uh, so link in the description, twitch.tv slash vikibreaker. Livestream is gonna be today at 6. Videos go out at 3. My time. So do the math and uh, be there or be square. <laughs> All right, let's go work on some magic stuff. So I was just working on some Batania, preparing for the next cut here, and I noticed that we're out of niter here for uh, making our fluxed phyto grow. So what I set up uh, down here, we have uh, this now. So I moved the nether star controller down here, and we can possibly move this to a separate area uh, that would make it look pretty cool and could be like the control room for all of the redstone bits. Uh, so what I have here is bah, 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 flip the right way. Thank you uh, is nether stars to a thousand like I had before and then here I have 39,000 niter we have 39,000 pulverized obsidian 39,000 blaze rods and 39,000 blizz rods uh, I can make pulverized obsidian in a different way and I can control this uh, For basalt rods if we ever start using those in higher quantities We can change this up and control it for basalt rod and the same here for the blitz rods But for now, I don't want to set up niter automation. I could put a seed in uh, In the flux fighter grow room and grow saltpeter seeds and then craft niter that way That could also be a thing if we don't want to run the spawner But for the moment, we're just gonna set up the spawners this way. So we're gonna come in here and I have the interfaces in for the controller or for controlling the spawners. So if we come in here, yeah, we have redstone interfaces right here linked to all of the spawners. And I think those are all on to, they're all on redstone on. Okay, so I think that's good. So if we possibly take the fans off and we turn this off, for the moment, I'm just gonna break all of these interfaces. Uh, do I have wireless access? I do not. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some interfaces right up here to the top. I think we're gonna do one, two. Uh, actually, let's leave a gap here. So one, two, three, and four. And the wisps, I want to have an uh, on my own automation, so I don't want to turn them on on and off this way. And then we're just going to say channel 2 is going to be here. Channel 3 is going to be here. Channel 4 right here. And channel 5 right here. Okay, so the 2, 3, 4, and 5 are like that. And we can just flip all of these to face the right way. There we go. Okay, and then I need to grab my redstone tool. Out of here, redstone tool. Like so, and we're just gonna link all of these to the right spawner. So let me just break a little bit of a gap here. Uh, and we said we have two through five going that way. So the two is gonna be Niter, which is the Blitz spawner. So you're gonna be this guy. And then you are the Basalts. So we're gonna turn that on. Uh, and then this guy is going to be the blaze. We're going to have lots of mobs in here. Blaze is the bottom one. There we go. And then you are going to be the last one, which is the blitz. Which is, I believe, this. Blizz. There we go. How? Stop. Okay, we're going to cover this up a little bit and turn on the fans so they all go down and get murderized. Sweet. So we now should be getting niter in the system. Uh, and that should all be connected. We can turn on the wisps whenever I need to go also grab a bit of dark glass to close this up But I think that is all pretty good uh, We might move this advanced redstone interface one out so it looks a bit better, but it really doesn't matter um, All right, uh, so that's the control up here. So we're getting basalts and blizzes in here We're also getting more mob essence uh, And that is pretty neat I'm going to turn this guy on, go grab some dark glass to cover it us up, and then we can work on Botania.
To continue off where we left off in Britannia, the next step is to get the Alfheim portal open just so we can unlock extra flowers for mana generation because I don't want to be stuck with endo flames for the rest of my days to create, to create mana. So I have made a mana splitter so we can create a lot more mana over here. So we're splitting it into four mana pools and we have one that is completely full. And all of the endo flames are producing mana from charcoal, and I need to just grab some more. It could be coal or charcoal, it doesn't matter. Uh, so I just grab like nine stacks or so of it, and then just toss it all in. There we go, that should be fine. All right, so for the Alfheim portal, I have everything prepared besides the Elven Gateway Core. We need some Natura uh, pylons over here to uh, provide... Uh, the requirements to open the uh, portal and we need the elven gateway core which is a special recipe from uh, the celestial altar uh, which i think we do have are we or are we at the starlight we're at the starlight altar right okay so we need the next tier of the altar here uh, before we can do anything which requires us to have the second tier plates thomium and arcane pedestal so the second tier plates we can do with blood magic. I think I have a couple made here. Yeah, sweet. Okay, so that should be good. And then let's just put the celestial, celest, celest, celestial altar uh, here on the left, just so we have it. We need some stardust, some aquamarine, stardust. I think I have uh, it right over here. Um, bup, bup, bup. There it is. Okay, we can just toss all of that in the system as well. Also, you may be noticing that um, our, the bottom floor of our temporary base is gone. I decided to remove that because it was no longer necessary. And as slowly as we're going to move machines downstairs and automate them, we can remove machines from here. So eventually, all of this is going to get removed and uh, it's just going to be empty here. I also set up this. It's an Ender library uh, with from Cyclic, which stores uh, enchantments, basically. And the way it works is you take a book, and then you can click it on the enchantment that you want, and then you click it on the Ender library, and you get the book back, but it stores the enchantment, which is really neat. I also made an enchantment factory and an enchantment applicator. And the enchantment factory, you can toss in books, uh, I toss books here in the top, and then it automatically just puts random enchants on them. Uh, and then I can just right click them over here onto the Ender library and store the books that way. Um, anyway, before we got distracted, we were making this. So we need to make the Celestial Altar. So we got the Stardust, we got the Reinforced Slates, we need a Rock Crystal. Uh, I have just a couple of those left. We need some Thaumium. Do I have enough? I do. Uh, I probably should make the Thaumium seeds, uh, which I think I can. Thaumium. Is it tier? That's tier 4. Yeah, I just need... I don't think I've made it yet. So, th for Thaumium. Yeah, we can make those. Uh, I'll just make those uh, in between cuts here. Uh, I'll just put them over here so I don't, for don't forget. Okay, so a Thaumium block, reinforced slates. Uh, what else? An arcane pedestal, which is made in either the arcane crafting thing or we need to research it from thomcraft okay so if we go into our thomonomicon that's gonna be infusion i assume so if we go in arcane infusion arcane paving snows we can complete that infusion current stage okay so we need stone feather and file of erisentia so stone uh feather and then we need to grab a file. I don't have any of those made. Uh, I don't think it's uh, any sort of difficult recipe. And then I think it was air. So let's grab uh, 10 of those, like so. And I believe this is made in the crucible. So we can just come into here and just toss the V crystals onto the crucible and toss the file on, and then we should get what we need. I remember now how you make the files. We need the Essentia Smeltery for that, so I, I need to craft it up real fast. It's a couple of brass plates. Brass plates. I think those can be made in the... Our plate maker, our compactor. So a couple of those. Whoops. Let's put the plate back. And what else? Uh, let's do Essentia. Smeltery, okay, 
So brass plates, cobblestone, furnace, and a crucible. So cobble, furnace, and a cauldron. And a <clears throat> Celes Mundus. There we go. So then we need to go to our uh, thumb crafty area so we can go craft this guy up. So we can go thumb craft. Uh, we're gonna make a crucible real fast. Where is our arcane crafting table? Here it is. So we'll take the Salus Mundus, poof it like that. And then we can make ourselves the Essentia Smeltery. Wonderful, 50 V. I know I could have had the dis discounts from my V armor, but you know, it's all good. We have pretty much infinite V in, in this magical forest. Uh, okay, so then we can shift left click, open up the Thaumonomicon, and we should have this complete. Lovely. And we need to make Arcane Alembics, which is more brass plates, a couple of Essentia filters, and some great wood planks. So firstly, we need the Essentia filters. I'm going to grab a couple of those and then we can make ourselves two Arcane Alembics and we can set this up inside of our compact machine so as not to spread flux all over the place. And we can just go to our render book, go back to the base and we can come up here to our Astral Sorcery area. Hop into the compact machine. I don't think this requires a uh, niter beneath it. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't, if I recall correctly. We're going to put it here and arcane alembics, like so. And we need some sort of fuel source. And then we need ourselves the Vic crystals to make the um, to make the essentia. And then we also probably need some uh, warded jars. So if we look here, I'm going to have to make some of these, which are just. Oh, lovely how it shows all the glass panes. So the glass panes and wood slabs with 5v cost. Uh, brass lid plates, what does that do? Brass lid brace. I have no idea what that does. Jar label. Okay, you can also craft brass lid braces. When used on a jar, they will prevent Essentia being drawn from or placed into the jar by anything other than tubes. Picking up the jar will remove the brace and return it as an item. Okay, interesting. Okay, so I'll make a bunch of labels and I will also make a bunch of water jars and then I need to make some of the tubing. So for that we need to grab ourselves file of Vidium, file of Vaniculum, file of Alienis and file of Alchemia. So I'll grab all of those, I'll show you how to make them uh, and we can then make some Essentia tubes. So this guy requires some sort of fuel source and I can just use this wireless RF heating coil to use 2000 RF to create 20 ticks of bird time, which is just gonna be infinite fuel. So then we can take, let's say 10 of these and toss them in here and that should, I need my goggles of revealing. Do I have them in here? I do. Okay, so let's take our helmet off, put the goggles of revealing so I can see how many LENs we have. We have seven, uh, we have nine, 10. And I think I can file this off of here. Yes, sweet. So you can just grab files like that. Uh, and then I need to make 10 alchemia. So let's put that many in there and see how much we get. 7, 8, 9, 10. It's not 100% that you get it each time from the V crystals, but it's really nice to have the V crystals. So we need a total of 10 in here. Let's see how many we get. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten. There we go. And we need a glass file like so. And then also ten more of these. Let's toss ten. There we go. Generally, you don't get it 100% of the time, but there we go. That should be ten. Lovely. And another glass file. And that should be this complete, wonderful. And now we get all of the Essentia tubes. So we can just make that and put stuff into water jars uh, when we need to. And I need to grab some air crystals to turn them into a file of air Essentia so we can finish the infusion research. I now have everything to complete this infusion recipe and we need to make the runic matrix next, which is just some arcane stone bricks and a night ore. Do we have an extra night ore by any chance? I do not. So I'm going to make one of those and then we can go craft this up. 
To get the most out of our Thaumcraft crafting, I'm going to craft some Thaumaturge's robes, and I'm also going to make the boots and the pants. And what we're going to do... Oh, we don't have enough fee. We need 95. Or well, we'll need a little bit less if I put this on. We need 90 V. So I'm going to wait for that to, to regenerate a little bit, because it's, it's not going to take too long. But uh, we... In the meantime, we'll accept some quests once this one's done, because we need a bunch of V to craft this guy, so we're going to need to do a little bit of waiting, or we can move the uh, the table around, but we need 130 V. So in the meantime, we're going to just grab some quests here. Oh, that is new. Interesting. Okay, that's new. Uh, so we can grab Enchanted Fabric, a loot chest, and and ourselves the Enchanted... That's also Enchanted Fabric quest uh, we can grab the essentia smeltery and we made the warded jars and we made the labels as well lovely uh, we need to make infusion crafting and then tallow candles okay and arcane bellows and thomium smeltery and then the add-ons and then the infusion stuff and then this is for the focuses alumentum alchemical constructs yeah those are going to be useful as well uh, golems we're not really going to go into void seeds do have a recipe so we're going to get to those at some point because lonsdaleite is craftable and then mycelium and tier 5 crafting seeds yeah, yeah that's really neat okay so void upgrades a rod of shifting crust i think that's a swapping wand from botania uh, some fans a diamond shield and a robust twilight oak sapling interesting Okay, we're going to toss all of that in the system. Do we have enough V? Lovely. So we're going to grab the Runic Matrix. That's going to be also another quest, I believe, right here. Oh, no, we need Arcane Stone and Arcane Pedestals. So I think now we can actually make this. And then we get the recipe for Arcane Pedestals, which is Arcane Stone Slabs, Arcane Stone, and Arcane Stone Slabs on the bottom. I need to go grab a bunch of that, and then we can craft it up. Right, so this is going to make ourselves 16 arcane pedestals. If we have enough V, we have, lovely. So we can go back to the base. And what I did uh, for the armor in my extended inventory, I just put my Supremium armor here on the side and we can just swap it out. Uh, and I think this, you have night vision, you have night vision. I want the no night vision one. There we go. And we can just change it for night vision and, and no night vision whenever we need to. Lovely. Uh, I'm going to toss the Runic Matrix away because we don't need it as of this moment. Uh, for the Celestial Altar, I think that should be eat. eat. <laughs> we need four Aquamarine. And we have the Stardust. We can get rid of some other stuff that we don't need in our inventory as of this moment. The Wool, the Diamond Shield, Chanting Table, Blank Labels, Jars, Files. Wonderful. Okay, so four Stardust, four Aquamarine... Thomium block, the, those, and that should be it, I think. We just need to grab our wand, and we're going to make it nighttime real fast with our super handy-dandy clock over here. Zerp. Uh, and then we should be able to just shift-click this in. Awesome. Boom. And that should upgrade the altar here, and then I have to break it and pick it up so I, we get the quest. But it makes really, really cool particle effects, which is really great. And it should be done any moment now, hopefully. There it is. Your vision expands. You learned more about constellations. So we're going to pick you up to get the quest. Wonderful. We're going to need a special setup for this guy. Uh, we can also claim a loot chest for this. And then go back to the quest lines. Astral Sorcery, Celestial Altar. And we are having more quests in here. We made the Divination Sigil at some point, and we made Arcane Ashes, okay? What else here? RF Tools? Oh, Environmental Controller. Cool. I think that's it. Okay, so more quests. Shrimp, Pork, Okra, Hush Puppies. A Dislocator. Hearty Breakfast. Spaghetti and Meatballs. And Oscalos Glass Blocks. Okay, sure. I don't know if I have... Yeah, I have Oscalos Glass as Blocks. Dislocator. And all of these that I haven't tried, I've just been tossing in here. And I'm setting up recipes for this, so not yet eaten. You just put it here, here, and here. So this is 10 foods, which is going to give us one heart. Uh, and you can do, I believe, slash food list. I think it's food list. Yeah. And then we can do size. And it says you have eaten 204 unique foods, so we need six more to increase our max health. So we're going to set up... Uh, 
basically 10 of these and the last one's going to be six long so we can get another extra 10 hearts but until then i'm just storing them in there because i want to have a full nice row of hearts okay so the celestial altar is going to require uh, a thing i think i have it where do i have my schematic controls i keep forgetting schematica alt numpad one okay so this, are you is are you going to work alt numpad one wonderful astral sorcery uh celestial altar done okay so we need to do alt numpad two and then just move this guy down one over this way and this way okay so i have to get rid of all of this that we have currently set up uh and i'm gonna make the next tier altar and i'm just gonna show it to you once it's done this is what the altar should look like when it's all complete. Ignore the blocks over there. Those are going to be for the spectre re relays that I want to make because I think we're low on starlight. If we want to make anything else, you should be... Okay, hold on. Make it dark. Where is my time in a bottle? Time in a bottle. That's sunrise. Da, 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 there we go, nine o'clock. Plenty of starlight. Okay, so resonating one. You can toss those away, those away. I need those terra steel nuggets. Beautiful. Okay, spectral relays. If I place them here, I think those should increase the starlight on this guy. It's almost full. So can I now make the starlight altar infuser thing that I wanted to make? Boom. Do you need... I don't know if it's working. I don't know if we need anything special on the altar. Hold on. So the starlight altar is in attunement, I think. So... Celestial altar. Just to suspect it, Stardust has more interesting properties. Okay. So that, because of these properties, enhancing the Starlight Collection capabilities of the Starlight... Oh, it did make it. It made the thing. Wonderful. Okay, so this is the structure that you need. It's all in the uh, in the schematics as well. You have everything here, pretty much. So the Starlight Infuser, I needed to make Resonating Gems, which I believe is Aquamarine in here. And then right-clicked with this. And one thing that this can do is drain the starlight that is in the floor because there's a total of 12 buckets. Yeah, here it drained a starlight. I don't know if it was this one. This one. There we go. So I need to make, I believe, two of these for the Elven Gateway Core. Yes. Okay, so just one more and we should be good to make the Elven Gateway Core. Come on, you can do it. There it goes. Okay, cool. Elven Gateway Core. What am I missing? Star metal ingots. Not a problem. One, two. Elven gateway core. Bam. Bam. Do the thing. We'll speed you up. Oh, come on. Nine o'clock. Does it not work because I speed it up and it's using more? Oh, it's an eclipse. Of course it's an eclipse. <sighs> so this is one of the structures that you need to do the attunement thing. And I would need to find, I would need the telescope and all that stuff, which I don't have right now. I should have enough starlight to do the thing as well. Okay, please craft it and be good. So the solar eclipse is you need to find uh, certain constellations in the sky and solar eclipse is to find the one that allows you to do uh, speed tick uh, or tick accelerations for um, for a ritual. And I was struggling last time to find a solar eclipse, but eventually I found the thing with the whole telescope thing or the observatory. But now we have our elven gateway completed. And I don't have enough time today to get the mana in here and get this open so we can actually toss the Lexica Batania through the thing uh, to get uh, to get this going. I'm gonna. How do you do? How do you uh, 
sneak Q, there we go, uh, to drop the Lexica Britannia out. But uh, maybe I do have a band. Do I have a mana tablet? No, mana tablet. Because what we can do is just toss some mana into the mana tablet and then we can just drain it into the thing. So if we go here with our Wand of the Forest, we can see this should drain the entire pool of mana. Can I speed this up? Oh, definitely. Okay. So that's going to be half a mana pool. And we're going to toss it onto this guy and speed it up. Boom. Come back over here. Pick up that guy. Maybe a bit more. I don't know if that is that is outputting. There we go. That's full. And we can come back here. Speed it up a little bit. And that way we have a full thing. We can then open the portal. And all I really need is to do this and grab this out. So this should drain a time. I don't think it drains mana uh, passively. It only is going to drain mana when we try to craft something. But with this Lexica Britannia, now that we have the Elven Guard, we can now craft or we can now make the Ritual of the Gaia if we wanted to fight the Gaia Guardian, which we're going to have to. Uh, but mostly generating flora, we have the Kekimuras, we have the Lyphion, uh, the Reflousy, the Shulkminot, which is also a really cool one, the Spectrolus. Oh, various tones of wool. Is there any and all wool drops not nearby? There's a caveat though. It's picky as to what color it wants, starting at white after it absorbs one piece of wool, it'll rotate to the next color in the spectrum. That could be an interesting one to automate. Uh Okay, cool. Oh, we can try that one. I haven't tried that before, so we can maybe do a some sort of block placey thingy around it, and then we just place one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or drop the right amount of walls. That could be an interesting one to automate. But anyway, as I said, we are kind of out of time. So I want to thank you all so much for watching. I'm hoping you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. You can also subscribe to see new videos. Hit the notification bell to get notified of when my videos go live. You can follow me on twitch.tv slash slipgator. What? Figgy breaker. <laughs> uh, and you can see live streams over there as well. And I will see you all in the next episode. Have a great one. Bye-bye.